Um, yeah, because and I, I wonder if someone is trying to let, let's say someone is, you know, 30, mid 30s. I think that's when a lot of people start getting a little bit more consciousness and they start looking back at their life and be like, how the fuck did I end up here? <laughs> totally. <laughs> and, 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 and then like you kind of you have enough awareness of like who you are, the path you've took, the mistakes you've made, the things you've been taught to, to try to piece that world together mm -hmm. and and then so let's say somebody wants to maybe they've drifted so far from who they who they are mm -hmm. how would you recommend somebody ha becoming more in touch with their feelings so they can identify it like let's say their entire life they've been dissuaded from you know let, let's say someone grew up in a family of all doctors and mm -hmm. the whole life they've been like doctor 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 you're becoming a doctor but in their mind, they really wanted to be a cook or whatever, but they've, they haven't been listening to themselves for so long that they really have detached from all the things that they really, really want in life. So how does someone go back to being able to listen to that, I guess, inner child, if so to speak, mm -hmm. um, to connect those feelings? I think the first step would be um, finding silence in your everyday life because it's very challenging to, to connect who, to who we truly are with all of the noise that's happening. Like we, there's, n there's not one second in our life where we're not getting called and what, you know, either by a text or by an email or by, you know, your friends just calling on the phone or it's, we get so lost and it's hard to find ourselves when there's so much noise around us. So I would say the first thing to do is even if it's five minutes, first thing in the morning is just sit in silence and be intentional about how you want your day to begin and what is your goal for that day and what is the next best step to take to reach that goal. Okay, and, 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 day, and day by day, you think that that silence will slowly cultivate more connection to your thoughts and who you, who you are, despite the people in your lives that perhaps are, tell, are trying to tell you to do something else. Yes, because I think by the time you're in your 30s, and believe me, when you're in your late 30s, it's even worse. That's what happened to me. Like at 39, I was like, like how, where am I? Like, how did this happen? <laughs> I don't understand. This is horrible. Um, you know, you have a knowing that where you are is not right. So then the idea is to find out, okay, if this, if I am not in integrity with my life right now, what actually would put me on the right path? And to do that, we really need to, our minds to get quiet and to say, okay, so this is not working, but what do I actually want? Where in my life, where in my, the, let's just say the pie, you have, your life is a pie. What's not hot? Like where, where am I off right now? Right? So is it, is it in my work? Is it in my spirituality? Is it in my, um, my relationships? Like identify where it is that you're being tripped up. As you said, I like that. Um, that word. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cause it seems like such a, uh, like a step-by-step -step process that you might, that you're, you're taking with some clients that you have to cultivate that silence, identify the things and then start making the effortful action to move towards, uh, I guess, a better direction for where you'd want to go. So, so let, let's say, because I was reading on your website, you, you predominantly work with women. So let's say a woman comes to you and she's like, listen, I'm 39. I'm married to someone I shouldn't be married to, right? Like, let's, let's say the marriage isn't bad. There's no, there's no, like, traumatic sort of stuff. It's just broken. There's no, there's no, there's no connection and she wants to, to get out. And let's say she wants to change careers. H how do you, because th these are all enormous decisions, Huge. And huge, like life changing, like grief inducing sort of de decisions. So how do you have someone come up with the, I get, I guess the internal fortitude to be able to make these difficult decisions and, and get out of 
a life, like uh, essentially exiting a life that they've built for themselves, be but they want to, you know, they want to change course. Okay. I, I would always, um, I would tell this woman not to make any rash decisions, not to leave the marriage until she can really visualize the life that she desires first. Um, and how, despite this marriage that is not working, can she become more of who she is? And could she add some happiness to her life? Like what can she do while still being in the marriage that like lights her up, that makes her more excited to wake up in the morning that connects her to, you know, to her community. Like first, before you do that, really, really think about like, is it really the relationship that's off? Or maybe it's something that's inside her that she still hasn't figured out yet that she needs to clarify. Like where, where am I off right now? Like, is it really the relationship or is it me? Is it right. the way I'm thinking? Is it the way I'm feeling? Is it what I'm not allowing to come in? Because a lot of times when you're an avoidant attachment, you're going to push things out because it's safer that way. But when you push things out because you're trying to protect yourself, there's no way for you to have true intimacy. So it might actually not be the marriage itself. It might be you not allowing him or her, let's just say to, to really know who you are. Like you're, you're really just trying to protect yourself. It could be, might not be. Right. So, okay. That's interesting. So you're saying if in, in that scenario, if that person perhaps is more avoidant and then mm -hmm. they're not giving any sort of affection, then that could be affecting the relationship and causing all of the issues that she thinks is, is the fault of the partner, but it's, it's potentially, a you know, a chicken in the egg sort of yes. sort of things. And, 